हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू ऑल डूइंग वेलकम बैक टू विष्णु स्मार्ट एंड फोर चैनल दिस इज योर ट्रैक टू फिजिक्स मेंट ऑन दिस साइड एंड आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी गुड इन योर स्टडीज प्रिपेयरिंग वेल फॉर योर एग्जाम्स एंड ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व मोर फिजिक्स प्रॉब्लम्स ओके सो वी हैव सक्सेसफुली ऑन दिस चैनल कंप्लीटेड टू चैप्टर्स इन ट्रैक टू सो इन ट्रैक टू we have successfully completed two chapters what were those two chapters gravitation gravitation and mechanical properties of fluids mechanical properties of fluids right so these two chapters we have successfully completed on the sorry i am, I am really sorry mechanical properties of solids mechanical properties of solids so these two chapters we have completely successfully completed on the channel and if you want the link link will be in the description box below if you haven't seen those chapters and not prepared your lectures please go and do it soon okay so in today's class we will be learning on mechanical properties of fluids okay so we will be learning on mechanical properties properties of fluids okay so this is the first lecture lecture number 1 and you know there was a very bad incidents happened with me i have already recorded this lecture 1 and i was trying to upload it on the channel but i don't know what was the network error or what was the issue the video didn't get uploaded i tried so many times now again i have to shoot the whole video again okay so already lecture 1 was made for you all that's why it is uh, two days late okay actually it was supposed to be on monday in the channel but we were trying so hard to upload it but the video was not getting uploaded so this is lecture number 1 for mechanical properties of fluids so in today's class you know we will be discussing about some uh, simple basic terms okay whatever the basic terms we are going to come in the chapter those basic terms we are going to uh, introduce in today's class so first of all let us understand what do you mean by fluids what do you mean by fluids okay fluids means it is related something which is flowing something which is flowing now flow means in the nature there are two things that will flow one is liquids and the other is gases right either liquids flow or either gases flow so these liquids and gases come under the topic of fluids but then how you distinguish that uh, for whom you will call uh, liquids and for whom you will call gases means for liquids you should remember it is incompressible liquids are incompressible and also they have a definite volume they have a definite volume okay so they are incompressible and they have definite volume but for gases they are compressible and they do not have a definite volume okay now liquids you know it will acquire the shape of the container and gases so you know like it is not it will occupy the whole container ka volume okay now the simple first term in this chapter which we are going to discuss is fluid thrust fluid thrust so what do you mean by fluid thrust if you are hearing any sort of sound this is due to some construction uh, is going on just beside my house so all that sound is coming i can uh, i can't help it i am really sorry for that noise please ignore them i am trying to increase the volume from my side okay so the first term we are going to uh, discuss is about fluid thrust now what do you mean by fluid thrust means see first of all i explained you about fluids now we should understand what is meant by thrust thrust is something which is a force thrust is nothing but a force a type of force okay now for fluid thrust it is a type of normal force it is a type of normal force normal force now what do you mean by normal force normal force means it is acting perpendicularly it means at 90 degrees at 90 degrees it is acting for example if this is your container if this is your container and in this container you have fluid filled like this some fluid is filled in this container like this okay now the force which is applied by whom by the fluid applied where on the walls of the container 
सो फोर्स विच इज अप्लाइड बाई द फ्लूड एंड ऑन द वॉल्स ऑफ द कंटेनर नॉर्मली सी सपोज इफ आई टेक दिस पोर्शन ऑफ द कंटेनर सो हियर वॉट एवर द फोर्स इज अप्लाइड बाई द फ्लूड लाइक दिस इन नॉर्मली इन नाइंटी डिग्रीज डायरेक्शन दिस इज कॉल्ड द फ्लूड थ्रस्ट सपोज फॉर दिस सर्फेस इफ आई टेक फॉर दिस सर्फेस this amount of fluid is applying this much force so this is fluid thrust over here so like that normally the force is applied okay like this in this direction the force is applied by the fluid normally to the walls of container so for this surface this is the direction of force for this surface this is the direction of force for this surface this is the direction of force i hope you understood right so this is the first term on fluid thrust okay now the second term the second term is fluids in equilibrium it's very easy from the words itself you can understand fluid in equilibrium fluids in equilibrium fluids in equilibrium means what see the fluid should remain in equilibrium means equilibrium means net force should be zero f net should be zero whatever the net total force on that fluid surface for example this is your container in this this is the amount of fluid over here suppose force a is acting f a is acting like this on this surface if i take f a is acting like this and another force f b is acting like this for example one force on this surface of the fluid one force is like this and one force is like this like this one force is one force is like this so the net force if how can i make net force zero means fa must be equal to fb then only i can say this surface of the liquid is in equilibrium this surface of the liquid should be in equilibrium means this fa must be equal to fb like that you should do the net force equal whenever the in the question it is given that fluid is in equilibrium means net force on the fluid is zero i hope you got it next the term which we are going to discuss is pressure exerted so pressure pressure exerted so for pressure exerted see pressure is nothing but pressure is equals to force upon unit area force applied on a unit area force is up force is applied by whom force is applied by the fluid force is applied by the fluid force is applied by the fluid and where it is applied on the unit surface area of the containers so that is the pressure applied by that fluid on the surface area of that containers so pressure is equals to force upon area okay pressure is equals to force upon area this force whatever the force is here you should take this force in the terms of normal this should also be normal force i already explained you now what do you mean by normal means it should be at 90 degrees means suppose if your if suppose if i i will want to explain this with a diagram see oh i'm sorry uh, have you noted that right if you haven't just uh, take your video just a few seconds back and just note it down so see if i take this as a container okay and in this container i have some fluid filled now if i ask now if i ask what is the pressure on this part of the container then what you should do means first of all you should see this or you should calculate the area of this much part okay we have done one job is done area so for pressure we needed force upon area now there there is so much of fluid over here right so much of fluid now which part of the fluid you should consider means the force applied by the fluid normally to the area means the only force like this normal force only you should consider because this surface is like this the force is acting that only this part of force you should consider suppose if there in, is there any force here acting like this uh, by the fluid some force is acting in this direction that force you should not consider why you should not consider because it is not making 90 degrees with the walls of the container it is in zero degree angle means you should consider the force which is in 90 degrees with the walls of the container okay i hope you got it see i will explain once again see suppose uh, um, again i will explain see there is so much of noise i can't help it only okay suppose this is your container okay and this is the amount of fluid in this like this the 
fluid is there in this container. Now what is happening I am telling you is suppose if they are asking the amount of pressure in this part of the container means how you should calculate for pressure you know that you need force upon area easy you know that for pressure we need force upon area so area to you know but how to which force you should take now suppose in this case i will tell by the fluid there are three types of force there is a force in this direction f a and there is a force in downward direction by the fluid only in that part area only whatever the force exerted by the fluid i am telling f b and there is a force in this direction f c so for calculating pressure on this much part of the container you should take which force means you should take fc you should not take fa and fb why you should not take fa and fb because because i said you for pressure you should take normal force now normal to this this much area this part of the container for this part of the container for this part of the container which force is normal fc is only normal right this fa and an fb to are in the same uh, parallelly to this wall so you should not consider that force okay i am really sorry please ignore that uh, construction sound so we are done with the pressure now now let's move on to the next topic and very important topic the actual numericals will start from here that is density so density which is very important term for fluids solids and as well as gases so density is nothing but mass upon volume mass upon volume density is equals to mass upon volume this is the basic equation on this basic equation there are two applications but i will suggest you not to uh, you know remember the applications as a formula just remember the simple concepts okay so the first application is suppose i said you density is equals to mass by volume but suppose if mass is not given only mass in the question is not given mass is not given if mass is not given what you will do then you should convert the masses into terms of density and volume and then you should substitute for example for example density of the whole system will be whole system ka mass divided by whole system ka volume so what you should do is suppose if i have two balls like this this is having a density d1 this is having a density d2 this is having a volume v1 this is having a volume v2 but as as per the question masses are not given so how you should do first you first you should find mass so m1 can be written as d1 into v1 from this mass is equal to density into volume okay similarly m2 is equal to d2 into v2 that's it now what you need to do very simple density is equals to m1 plus m2 divided by v1 plus v2 so in place of m1 and m2 substitute these two okay in place of m1 you write d1 v1 plus in place of m2 you write d2 v2 divided by v1 plus v2 that's it that is your formula now this is the case when mass is not given this should be your formula okay but instead of remembering this a formula as whole i will suggest you to instead of remembering the whole formula just remember the concept if mass is not if mass was not given if mass was not given then what you should do if mass was not given for you all then what you should do means you should convert the mass in the terms of density and volume okay easy easy peasy clear okay so let's move on and one question on this same concept i want to ask one question i want the answers in the comment box below suppose the same formula density is equals to mass by volume same mass is not given uh, mass there are two systems there are two balls this two balls i am giving you one is having a density d1 another having a density d2 and uh, this is having a volume v this is also having a volume v what will be the density of the whole system density of whole system what is the density of whole system i am asking you okay easy peasy i want the question uh, i want the answers so this is question number 1 
so i have decided to ask multiple questions because i want you to answer in the comment box below you can answer even in the chat box though it is a premiering season i will be seeing the chat box so people who are uh, you know uh, constantly on the chat box they only will be taken in my coming further plans i have decided few plans on the channel of uh, especially for the track to physics for that uh, part if you want to be Uh, part of that plan and you want to personally contact me uh, for your better performance in physics then you need to answer in the comment box then you need to like the video then you need to answer in the uh, chat box also so put your answer same concept okay question number 1 ka answer i want in the comment box below and people who answer the first i will take the names in the coming video okay also the thing i want the reply from uh, because my last videos may i have been i have tried all the three methods the first method i have tried on teaching on marker and pen method the second i tried on uh, teaching on paper and pen method this is the third digitally teaching please let me know which you are liking the most like which is making you feel more interesting or to learn more like you know which is attracting you more towards the um, learning process like you want marker or pen you want paper and pen mode or you want this digital method please uh, also answer that in the question now let's move on to the second application for the density the second application is c density is equals to mass upon volume i said you so mass upon volume now in the question volume will not be mentioned volume is not mentioned please ignore that sound this is the construction sound i'm getting irritated with this oh my god volume is not given in the question so if volume is not given how you are supposed to do so that time you should convert volume in terms of density and mass okay for example if there are two balls like this they are having a mass m1 this is having mass m2 this is having density d1 this is having density d2 but volumes as per the question not mentioned then how do you write v1 v1 is equals to m1 by d1 and v2 is equals to m2 by d2 that's it you got the volumes now substitute as per the formula what is the formula that density is equals to mass upon volume so net density is equals to m1 plus m2 divided by v1 plus v2 okay divided by v1 plus v2 and see now so what we did uh, density is equals to um, density is equals to m1 plus m2 plus v1 plus v2 so we had masses we substituted but we didn't have volumes but we have already found the terms of volume in terms of density and masses so we substituted this m1 by d1 plus m2 by d2 so this comes your formula in this case is where volume was not given so this is the formula where you should apply when volume is not given volume is not mentioned but okay easy now again uh, second question question number 2 i want the answers in the comment box below please the person who will answer only will be taken in the plan so question 2 is there are two balls okay having density d1 density d2 but both are having same masses what will be the net density this is the second question now today's last topic which we are going to discuss is relative density what is very easy you know many people will get confused uh, specific density with respect to air and all those terms nothing to remember just a simple concept very easy i will make this topic for you relative density just remember as rd relative density okay relative density so relative rd relative density is equals to density of the substance density of substance divided by it is the ratio of density of substance divided by density of water at 4 degree celsius at 4 degree celsius why i took 4 degree celsius because density of water is maximum at 4 de degree celsius what is the value 1 gram per cc that's it that's it okay and how you should uh, how in the questions hint will be given you know see they will say relative density of aluminum is 9.7 for example i am saying in question how they will give you that relative density of aluminum so directly there won't be any question that density of aluminum is this much find out the relative density this is very easy question no one will ask that okay because this number itself should be divided by 1 so no one will ask that this will be given in the 
questions to confuse you like to get out the values of density directly instead of mentioning the value of density they will say rel relative density and once you see the term relative density you get confused nothing to confuse relative density of aluminium suppose if they are giving 9.7 grams per cc if they are telling means what does that mean that relative density is equals to relative density of sub um, we know that relative density is equals to density of substance density of substance divided by density of uh, water density of water right density of water right so relative density is given what is that 9.7 density of substance you don't know but you know density of water 1 gram per cc so what will be the density of substance also 9.7 gram per cc only no that's it you should just remember here the units see the units carefully it is in gram per cc or whatever it is convert in that form and do means keep the units of density of substance and density of water same that's why they can get easily cancelled or else suppose density of substance you are taking in uh, like kg per meter cube but uh, density of water you took in gram per cc then you probably uh, you will get confused keep the units same okay units or density of substance in whatever units you are calculating in the same units you should calculate the density of water then it becomes easy now what is the literal meaning of the de relative density is nothing but uh, for that substance how much time more its density is for example suppose this is a suppose this is a piece of aluminium kept here and in this uh, this much only uh, water was there it means that density of this substance is 9.7 times more than the density of this much uh, volume of water only okay the same amount of volume of water how much density this suppose this is water and this is aluminium so how much density this water was having compared to that 9.7 times more the density is having the aluminium that is the literal meaning of relative density means re relatively you are checking the substance density with the water that's it that simple concept it is okay easy just now question number three of the today's class is what is the units i said you density is nothing but mass by volume so mass can have different unit gram kgs uh, you know different units can be there for mass volume also can have cc uh, meter cube different volumes for uh, mass and volume uh, different units they can have and density also therefore in different terms uh, different units it can be calculated the question three is what is the units of relative density question number three units units for relative density i want whatever the units are and also dimensions and also dimensions i want so what is that units and what is the dimensions for rd rd means relative density i have already explained you i want the quick answers below okay what are the units for relative density and uh, dimensions also for relative density that's it for today's class thank you for watching today's class have a good day in next class we will be uh, learning on pascal laws barometer and manometer all those concepts okay thank you very much uh, also Please do comment that you like digital thing or you like pen and paper mode or you like marker and all. So thank you very much everyone for today's class. Please do like, share and please I request all of you to comment your feedback. Please, please comment your feedback. Okay and also thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye bye Tata. See you.